We're talking anxiety, the new teen epidemic with TED Talker Megan Gallagher. Stay tuned. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hey. I just feel hey. like surf's up, dude. I every know, time. right? And summer as well. Well, coming up. Coming up. Actually, well, no, yeah. it's not. Yeah, I mean, no, honestly, like, this is crazy. It's gray in LA. <laughs> it's gray in LA. What up, After Buzz? It's your boy DJ Jesse J live in studio with. She's finally back. I'm back. I miss everybody. I've missed you so much Thank last you. week. That topic you, and as well this, was with this periwinkle amazing. haircut. She I know. Came back you mean? Thank you. I'm back again. Yay! Thank you. It's Yaz and Tanres. I'm so excited to talk today about anxiety, Ooh. the new teen epidemic. It's uh, it's Mental Health Awareness Month as well, isn't it? Welcome to May. Yes. I mean, can we get some sunshine for some mental health? Yeah, seriously. (laughs) There's a lot of SAD symptoms going around, I feel. Funny story. I actually just bought an SAD light yesterday. Wait, what's that? It's a uh, seasonal and depression light. That actually gives like rays of it, like sunshine, sunshine to make you feel elevated house. again. Because when my dog's at home, I'm like, I feel like he needs it because my apartment's really dark. So I, was oh, like, I love that you just thought about it for your dog, but also for yourself. Well, right? I'm out and about, honey. <laughs> <That is laughs> but incredible. we have a special guest we in do. studio. Yes. Hit it. Megan Gallagher. Woo! Hey, Hi, thank you for joining us. Thank here. you so much for having me. It's incredible. So you've you're an author, you're a mental health advocate for teens and a TEDx talker. Yeah. Spoke about anxiety, the new teen epidemic. Very fascinating. You've written three books, in fact. Yes. Um, so one of them is called Life is Happening for You, Not to You. Mm. Yes. Which is funny because it's our boss and mentors. Uh, yep. Mantra. Kevin and Maria. Kevin Andagara and Maria Menounos, who always say this to us. So it's incredible that you've written a book on that. Yeah. And um, you can choose, and everything is happening for you. So it's all about anxiety and yes. body image, positivity. Yes. Um, and so no wonder, you know, I mean, it's very fascinating your journey as to from 14 years old, you went through your chronic anxiety, picked up mm-hmm. on that, and then from 16 made it your life mission to instill some power into teens in order to be aware of mental health issues and anxiety. Yes. So, So like, 16 years old, like... Now, let's also talk about that two years... You were like, you know what? I'm going to overcome this within two years. Not fully overcome it, but like I'm going to start applying it and helping others. At 16 years old, yeah. girl, I was running around doing the most. Yeah. I so have tell no us- idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell us about... Wh- 14 years old, like, yeah. that's when you first, ex- like, understood that you were experiencing it. Because I always go back to... Um, how young was I when I was really going through these emotions? Do you feel like you were experiencing at a younger age too? But 14 was when you it really started clicking. Mm. Yeah, and for me, it's as young as I can remember, like nine years old. I remember waking up in fourth grade and my mom's like, time to get ready for elementary school. Mm. And I just was like, my arm hurts, my stomach hurts, I can't go to school, just call in sick again. And it just, my parents were very aware of it and they knew that I was a sensitive child and they kind of picked up on it, but it wasn't until 14 when I had my actual, like I was old enough to understand, okay, so this is act, an, an actual panic attack. You know, I'm not nine years old and I'm worried about like sleepovers and field trips. Right. Like I'm an adult and this is a thing. Like this is happening in my body. And so I kind of put the dots together um, but it was a very long journey. I'm curious <laughs> because, you know, I mean, like, at, you know, you're so young at that stage. And, and did your parents in any form notice anything or were they able to explain anything or what, did you have to sort of come up with that? Yeah, it was a mixture. I mean, one, I'm so thankful that I grew up in a household where it was healthy and happy and my parents were like, we are here for you, you know, encouraging me to have open, honest conversations. And my sister was so great and everyone was so supportive and it was a mixture. My parents, you know, they didn't say anything until I sat them down when I was Mm -hmm. almost 15 and I was (laughs) very dramatic. After dinner one night, I'm like, Courtney and Ted, 
I think something is wrong. Oh, <laughs> like, God, not even she, mom and dad. Is she a lesbian? No. Is she about no, to break I, us? I know, because when you're a teenager, you don't know. Like, your kid... I, so, I was just was like... <clears throat> <laughs> well, please hold my hands. <laughs> Courtney dead. Um, I was like, and I just remember for 45 minutes, I picked every adjective and noun. I'm like, I kind of feel like I'm dying, but I kind of feel like I'm having a stroke and I kind of feel like I'm having a heart attack. And they were like, they kind of looked at each other and they're like, Megan, it runs in our family. It's called anticipatory anxiety. You're fine. And they just were like that and that. It felt like this like wall came down. I'm like, oh, I see the light. And that just led down a journey of like therapy and exercise and journaling. And yeah. No, I mean, I grew up with it, too. Um, And especially like when you spoke about biting nails. And it's funny because I've been biting my nails since. I Yeah, mine are really good. I've been, I, but and I used to really be nervous about it and oh, scared yeah. about them mm-hmm. and like uh, uncomfortable. And then it just got to the point of like, okay, I I would go to people and when I would meet them, I'd be like, my biggest fear is uh, or insecurity is my fingernails. And they're like, well, why are you telling me that? I'm like, I guess because once I say it, now I'm not afraid of it. Yes. And, and so yeah, yeah, you know. But for me, it was always I would try to go back as like. Why do I bite my nails? You know, and a lot of people don't talk about it uh, because it is such a like self-conscious thing. Like you don't want to admit that you do it. And for me, it was like I go back and I'm like, okay, was I was it anxiety for me? And, you know, um, mine was really, really, really young. Like, honestly, it was probably around like six years Mm. old, five to six years old where I started doing it and you know my mom would put the little nail every type of way to try and stop the bad tasting nail polish yep Yep. and then it would you know she would take me to (laughs) therapy and all that kind of stuff and you know nothing even to this day like i still do it it's like it's almost like habitual like it's yeah it's it's like a conditioned pattern that you know it's like a form of release Mm -hmm. and like i mean thankfully i feel really grateful that like i remember making the connection um and i've been talking about this a lot lately of just in you know fourth fifth grade and I just was like I'm so worried all the time what is happening like I feel like I'm dying and I just would like go home and just like journal and read and I'm like I want to just move like Mm. something about moving movement felt good to me it felt like I was releasing something so every night before bed I would literally put on and this is in like 2000 like five 2004 and I would put on these like the Walkman CD yep. and just put on like Britney or like ne- now 15, <laughs> yes. whatever it was big then. And I would just go crazy. And I'm just like, dancing makes me feel free. And But I made the connection of like, this is making me feel better. So I want to do more of this. I can, I can even see it now. Like, yeah. It's, oh yeah. There's I'm a like... lot of moving, shaking, and it just feels good. <laughs> like it's so appealing, like attracting, magnetic. Oh, I do in the grocery store aisles. I'm like flipping around, like shimmy twerk. Like I... <laughs> A shimmy twerk. I love that. What's a shimmy twerk? <laughs> do it at once. <laughs> now, do you feel, I feel like... like... you need to take that on rather than biting your nails. Girl, but the thing is, I move around so much. I, I do everything. Like literally. At the same time. <laughs> Literally. Seriously, yeah. like, it'll be things my mom would be like, Jesse, don't you taste that? I don't even taste it in my mu- ah. That's that when they would put that oh, stuff on. Oh, yeah. It's not in my brain. Like, it's just like, a, it's almost zen like. So when you said outlet, yes, out- yes. it was an outlet, out- outlet for yeah. you. Mm. And that connected for me. And I was just like, what is the outlet? Because I've done. I'm get, I want to get into yoga, but I've done meditate. I've really into like meditation <laughs> and cleared my sh- <laughs> my chakras and everything, like all that stuff. I've done that, you know, and it's just that's the one thing that has always stuck, and it's weird. Yeah. But with you, did you ever? Were your parents ever? Um, did you ever go on medication and like stuff like that? Like, did you balance like okay, natural remedies versus? Yeah, for me, and this is just my family's personal belief, but you know, we are just more of a holistic kind of family and Mm. I I mean I have nothing against medication but I personally never needed it Um, and I remember you know when I was 14 sitting my parents down and we had a really honest conversation and they were like okay so these are the routes that we want you to take because your brain is still developing and you know you're still coming into your own and the hormones the body changes so we want you yeah. yeah to just stick with therapy and just try journaling. And then as when you're an adult, you can make the choice if you choose to take medication. And that's just, 
that's what worked for me as an individual. And I'm very thankful for that because it has brought me to knowing that nature makes me feel better and dance and movement Mm -hmm. and just like singing out loud in my car and like the silly little things and cleaning up my room. But like, it really does make a difference. Right. Is that is that something that when you, when you were taking those measures of like figuring out going out into the woods and dancing and yes. everything, when you were going to therapy, is that something that was pinpointed during those sessions? Because I'm curious to know like the journey and the transition yeah. there for some people. Because you know, often parents or you know single parents or people who might not have parents can't send them to places like therapy, but how do you advise for those kind of people to be able to pinpoint um, what it is that can, they can seek pleasure for or through right. and avoid habits that might create anxiety? Of course. Um, I think just just being self-aware and getting back into your body, because one thing I've noticed with anxiety is that, you know, you're thinking it's like a merry-go-round of 5,000 little, like, Mm-hmm. horse carts and it's just like 5,000 thoughts and you're like should I go to this person's house what if they say that and what if I do that and what if I get traffic and what if I like that for like all day long and if you don't you know put the thoughts on paper or tell someone I feel like you're kind of just out of your body and you're just floating and you're just like picking up on other people's energy and you're just kind of cr- like just anxious and overwhelmed but I feel like you can make the self-aware choices when you are like in your body and that's after meditation or being in nature or whatever and just decide, you know, like what is available to me, whether that's therapy or there's so many apps and, you know, hotlines where you can call people for free and there's so many apps where you can find a therapist near you and it's cheap or the meditation apps, um, going to an exercise class, just talking to your cousin or your favorite person or like the simple things, when you do them consistently, they really do make a difference. The Mm. apps right now, there are so many options. And a lot of them would be like, they'll get you to sign up and then it's like (laughs) $79.99 for the year. You're like, well, all right, nope. Uh, But there are so many free ones out there that you guys can check out. Yes. But you made this comment about being a prisoner to your mind's power. Oh, yeah. Um, (laughs) I mean, when I was in high school and my personal anxiety was anticipatory anxiety. So it was basically before an event, whether that's hanging out with friends, going to a dance, um, going on a date, going to like just anything on a flight, my mind would start anticipating, what if the plane crashes? What if I get sick? What if I make no friends? Like all of these things. What if? The what if. what if. Yes, the head talk. And I was not aware of it. So for all the first three years of high school, freshman, sophomore, and junior year, my mind started anticipating. And my TED talk is that story of that first panic attack. Mm -hmm. And then after that, Mm -hmm. my body started connecting, okay, so in English class, I feel this way at 11, 15 a.m. And then it became all all seven classes for three years in a row. And I was just was like, what is happening? And so in that moment, I felt like I was a prisoner of my own mind because it's like, I'm doing this to myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when I actually started seeing a therapist and, you know, vocalizing it, she asked me a really crazy question. She was like, well, why would you want to make yourself feel this way? Mm. And I'm like, I I don't know. And then that led down a whole other path of then I tried hypnotherapy. It was very... Hypnotherapy as yes, well? What yeah. was that experience like? Very emotional. It, it. I mean, I grew up... I had a very positive childhood, but that was like, you know, you're kind of under this hypnotic trance. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, at first I thought it was like when I was 15, I'm like, this is a spell. It's a curse. Like, I'm not gonna be able to get out of this. But um, she's like, okay, lie back on the couch. And she, you know, count down from 10 to one and you're walking down a staircase and there's a gold door and you open the gold door. And who do you see? And it's very crazy because I remember, still remember to this day, I remember seeing myself as three years old and I bawled. I started bawling. That's crazy. And wow. I just, I, yeah. I felt like I was about I to, I was, <laughs> I was bawling my eyes out and she's like, well, tell me, what do you see? And it just got to the, it connected so many dots of like, why do I do this to mm-hmm. myself? Like, don't I deserve to like feel good? And it just, yeah. I think it was in one of Maria Menounos' um, podcasts where they were also discussing something of 
look at yourself or go back to the time of when you were a child and hug yourself essentially yeah like telling yourself as a child i love you Mm. and that can be so powerful to really feel that self-love appreciation and make yourself feel better yeah how do you change your what if negative to what if positive What if the flight gets there quicker and I get to get off? What if when I land, I'm going to be welcomed with open arms? Like, how did you train yourself in that aspect? Um, And that's such a good word to use, train, because it is training. It's like training a muscle. Your mind is a muscle and you're training it. And if you've been thinking negatively for five, ten years, then it's going to take, you know, more than a day, (laughs) more than one therapy session to like, it's like you're going in one circle this way. For five years and then you want to start going this way it's like king, 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 king. like mm. your mind's like it's like pulling teeth and yeah. that's what i felt i was like this is bringing up so many emotions but i remember um i had an epiphany one day towards the end of my sophomore year where i had started seeing a therapist and i was kind of you know questioning why i was doing this and what is the point of this i remember a light bulb clicked and i was like every time i think a negative thought I get a pit in my stomach. Mm. But when I think positively, like what if the flight does get there quicker? Or what if I do meet friends and it's awesome? That doesn't make me feel a pit in my stomach. Mm -hmm. And so from then on, I'm like, well, if I do think positive thoughts, it actually makes me physically feel better. So I was like, okay, this makes me feel better. I I want to do more of this. So yeah. And that was the turnaround. Yeah. I had watched this YouTube video and um, this girl, she was talking about, she does a tally mark. And every time she thinks something negative is going to happen, she experiences whatever it was, and then she puts a tally mark if it was negative or if it was positive. And she started realizing every single thought she had wasn't wasn't even a real thought to even have because Uh. it was just going in the way it was supposed to go. And none of these things actually happened. I was like, that's interesting. Because like you said, sometimes you need to write it down and you need to see it in front of yourself. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, you're taking it out of your head. And if you, it's like when you say it to someone else, you're like, I really spent five days thinking that thought of, you know, a person that I haven't seen in five years or a person who doesn't matter. And I mean, I could write a list of the thoughts that I have felt in my life and you guys would be like, what the... Mm. It's embarrassing, but it's like... But actually, you'd really you, see how relatable everyone is. Yeah. You know, if everyone took the thoughts out of their head and like made the a song like... Whatever gets struck by lightning. <laughs> everyone would realize like, Oh yeah, I've kind of had anxiety too. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> I'm curious about um you had this whole like at that point of before getting onto the flight and you yes. had those what is moments and everything. <laughs> yeah. Um you had these like internal feelings but you weren't expressing them. No. At the time. And so what do you think I mean, I know it's normal, like all of us don't necessarily express in moments sometimes or feel safe to or feel like, oh, what? Like, am I an idiot for feeling that? Yeah. 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 Um, But but do you advise now having gone through this journey to not keep it inside? Like, why put a smile on? Oh, no. I mean, if I could go back, I would be like, honey, (laughs) like, (laughs) just like, you don't have to be like a soldier every second of the day. Like, I... I had this story in my head that it's weak if I ask for help and it's bad. And it, it, this is nothing. It's not because of my parents. It's just Which me. is weird because I, you grow. I look at the same thing because you, you grew up in a great family great. that was yes. open to yes. that. Yes, so And great. it's almost like the, uh, last uh, last week with Chantel, we were talking about how outside forces yes. are the things, you know, when you go to school, you start developing those type of feelings. Mm, yes. And, I mean, I'm still, you know, putting together... Th- the dots of when did I create this story? Yeah. Because what I've been doing now and for the last three years of like full time, you know, speaking at middle schools and high schools, it's been like a very healing full circle moment for me. And I I have like dreams of stuff of going back to my old schools and I'm like now talking about it. It's like the craziest stuff has yeah. come up and people from my old high school reach out to me. I'm like, hey, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I I don't know where I formed it, but I remember I was always the friend that was like, are you okay? Do you want money? Do you want food? I can give you a ride (laughs) to this gas station, the 7-Eleven. Like, you can cry to me for four hours and I will never, like, say anything about me. And I I 
I still like I love helping others, but I was struggling so much, and I I never let it show. You know mm-hmm. how to help yourself. I, I would just ask the teacher. I'd be like, "Can I go to the bathroom?" And I would be like pinching my hands under my desk, like, "Don't let anyone see you because yeah. it's embarrassing." And it's it's it, I mean, having a panic attack though, it's uh, it's it's not embarrassing, but it's like. It's a personal moment, yeah. right. and it's scary. You don't understand, especially and if you're it's on scenic, display you in public. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, so my favorite quote is, "Gratitude can shift your attitude." attitude. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which was a cool trip for you. You went down to uh, New Orleans, yes. yes, and then you were building. Well, the buildings there because of the Hurricane Katrina. That must have been an experience. Oh. So, like <laughs> talking about it, just I'm like brought back to that moment. But like, I mean. It's like I was and I will never, you know, say like, oh, my gosh, I was wanting attention. But I, I was so in my own head and I was dealing with a lot. Anxiety is hard and mental health is a very challenging journey. Mm-hmm. But to go like to be taken out of my little bubble of a hometown and be like plopped in the middle of like the ninth ward in New Orleans where, you know, from it was 2012 and Hurricane Katrina was 20, 2007. It's crazy. And the houses, it looked like a cemetery all washed out, people walking around in, like, sitting in boxes with a shirt halfway ripped. Uh, like, it was the most, my, just, like, light bulbs were going off. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have to be more grateful. Oh, my gosh, wait, why am I so anxious? Oh, my gosh, I get to, like, run around the French Quarter in this cool trip, and I get to, like, help these people. And um, I remember we worked on one house for all three weeks, and we were literally building it from the ground up, and we got to meet the homeowner, Miss Rose at the end of the trip and she showed up in this like in the south like this Kentucky Derby hat and this like faux like fox scarf and was just like well hello babies like I'm like this is amazing and she was just crying like her husband had passed away in the hurricane she had lost you know the the great stuff all the pictures the birth certificates the priceless stuff that Mm. is just like you never get back and she bawling and hugged up and I just was like I started crying too and it something that was a huge moment mm. like where I'm like I I need to really be grateful. Yeah. It's <laughs> almost like when you kind of are exposed to somebody else's life that's like really just full on in the I don't want to say in the, like in the rough edges, oh, right? And yeah. um, through that appreciation you then kind of have a switch in your mind. Um I'm just so I'm just curious like for teens, because nowadays, you know, you've touched upon this as well in your yeah. talk. You're so much more exposed to social media. We all yeah. are, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it's not just teens, but I guess, uh, like, I'm curious to know what, um, why the anxiety is so strong. You mentioned, you know, you you posted something as well on your Instagram yes. about the stats. Yeah. Um, my personal belief and all the three years that I've been doing this and just the teens that I've talked to, I really feel like it's just one, it's the academic stress. And I talked about this in my TEDx talk, but there was a Harvard study done where comparing 1982 to now 2019, the average GPA it takes to get into a four-year college Mm -hmm. was a 2.5, and now it's a 3.8. Wow. Wow. That's very significant, Mm -hmm. and I mean, me personally, academics didn't click, so I I can't imagine, I mean, it's like they're trying to come into their own, but there's so many, like, questions every day, like, do you know what you're going to do for the rest of your life? They have to fit these boxes that are being told, that they have to jump into them. What do you want to major in? Who are you dating? Do you want to go to this homecoming dance with this person? Like, what's your, your, do you like these, do you like this person? Like, have you guys seen Bad Moms? The movie yes. Bad Moms. No. I just watched it the other day and I was like, wow. Like, because I, I was like holding off on because I'm like, oh. Mm. And actually watching it, seeing the stress just with the little girl in the movie, and then the mom was stressed oh. and the mom like broke and she said, stop. Like, everybody just stop. Yeah. What are we doing to these kids? You know, when I, when I look at a mm. lot of the things that were being taught in school, I was stressing about, you know, certain tests and stuff. And it's like, I should have been focused. Yes. I wish I was more focused on certain life things. Because it probably would have been a little easier for the transition from middle school to high school. High school to college. College to life. But then that just showcases 
education. Yeah. The education system needs it's, to change massively. And I think that's like people like you. It's amazing to have people like you who are so young and, and so outspoken and confident mm. in order to instill that into younger people who don't necessarily feel that confidence or even know like, actually, this is normal and this is okay for me to feel this way, to express myself and to seek for help. Oh, yeah. I mean... If I, like, when I was, like, 13, 14, I mean, I was so uncomfortable. I was getting, like, C's and D's and some F's, and I was just, was, like, had a neck ear and, like, a mullet haircut, and I'm, like, what are my passions? Like, does anyone else feel this way? And really the inspiration for what I'm doing now and my TEDx talk is I'm just creating the space that was absent mm -hmm. when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a very nice community, very healthy family, awesome friend group, but like there just was no open, honest conversations and no education about, do you love yourself? Are you happy? Do you like your friend group? Do you feel anxious? Like, do you, like it's okay, do, do you love your body? Do you like, I was like, I just was like, does everyone else feel this way? Like, yeah. so I, I really like, I worked so hard to create it. And I'm just like, the teen years, it has such a big place in my heart. I'm, anytime I see a teenager who's upset, I'm just like, I want to give you a hug for five hours. <laughs> like, yeah. well, I, feel like the <laughs> yeah. I feel like the stigma is being a little, it's starting to break the wall down now. Yes. I, I feel and that's like, through conversations like these. Yes, yes. And I feel like, you know, especially we talked about a few weeks back, um, we had all these guys in here and it was so funny oh, yeah. because we <laughs> talked about masculinity <laughs> yeah. and how all of us growing up, it was weird for men to say, I love you to each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I feel like we're growing into a place. And like for me, growing up gay in, in high school and like middle school, that was... Oh, I can't talk to anybody. I can't, you know, wow. and so you feel sheltered and, and mm -hmm. high schoolers go through this, whether it's that or they're getting picked on at school, yeah. what the case is or waiting for, oh my God, what's this test going to be? And you made this mm -hmm. comment where you said you can wait five more minutes. Yeah. Instead of just stressing out, just you can wait five minutes. Yeah. And if after that five minutes, mm -hmm. you're still feeling that way after you've done your deep mm -hmm. breaths and all that there stuff. There you go. You know. Meditation, yeah, yeah. Yes. Give yourself that headspace. It's yeah. so necessary. Like, is it worth, you know, thinking about for five more minutes or one more day or two more months? And that's the importance of writing, a, writing it down and talking to someone and really just thinking, are these thoughts currently, because... People, there was like a study done where it was like people can think up to 10,000 thoughts per day oh, or, more, or more. Totally. Yeah. I'm sure I'm up in like the millions. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm right up there at Lisa Frank. <laughs> like, did that person in that car cut me off? Did that in my eyebrows? <laughs> Isn't that crazy how our brains can function? Right. And it's like how many of them are productive, positive, encouraging? Like, are you your biggest bully? Yeah. Or are you yeah. your biggest supporter? Which technically in life you are. When, you know, for One thing I learned was growing up, I always was afraid of the judgment of others. And realistically looking at that, I'm my biggest bully because there is so... You, you think in high school, this is all the people in the world. Oh. <laughs> this is it. Whatever they think is going to... Then you go to college and you're like, oh, fuck <laughs> that. Like, <what? laughs> Moving on. I, I don't want to get all philosophical or anything, but it's like... Rousseau, he says something about amour propre versus amour de soi. And this is like French translation, but amour de soi is like um, loving thyself without judgment. Mm. Mm. Therefore, it's like you don't care about what you're projecting mm -hmm. out there. Like you don't care what other people think. It's just about you, right? But, you know, it's normal to go through those emotions yeah. and those transitions. And you have to allow yourself to, you have to give yourself that space. And then it will come to a point where it clicks all of a sudden, like for yourself, when you went abroad and you took that measure, you took that step. And oh, yeah. obviously it's like, it takes that moment of courage in order to overcome that. Yeah. Now, Amour Propre talks about um, being, uh, it's loving through the eyes of others. Wow. And that is like, you know how you see on Instagram, like people displaying their love with their partner or friendship or whatever, you yeah, know, like yeah. the great lives that they have. Yeah. But then it's like, that kind of a love can be so like, you're just trying to impress somebody. Yeah. Why why not just impress yourself? Impress yeah. yourself. Yeah. And that's how, you know, mentally you can grow and 
be stronger. Sorry, yeah. I am no. so passionate about but this that topic. Was great, now. Oh, and that I think you're gonna so beautiful. <laughs> and especially, I've, I've never heard oh. you speak like that. Oh, like, oh, oh. yes, man. <laughs> It comes in a moment, you know, in this kind of an atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to like this. So we always do our Teddy's Twitter oh, poll yes. talk. Uh, yes. And so I think you're going to be interested to hear some of the answers. Right? I love so, it. Yeah, Yasmin, what we got? So we uh, asked our Teddies, how often do you experience anxiety? And so we did a little poll as to <sighs> every day, every week, occasionally or rarely. Yeah. Number one spot, occasionally. Yes. Number two, every day. Mm. And I will point it out as well that it was more females that experienced uh, more yeah, frequently yeah. than males. Is it? Or is it the females felt more comfortable in the to situation ex- to express, express it? express themselves. That's an interesting... Because, like, what I've noticed is I've always been one to kind of draft myself towards females because I w- always wanted to vocalize my emotions. And yes. I've noticed that females do. Yes. More mm. so than men. Yes. And that's what I'm really happy that men are starting to. Yes. So that that could, I, I would wonder if that was kind of, how that, many guys that, went through your thing and was like, <laughs> so, next, answered next. every day in their head. <laughs> every day. Uh, never. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> moving we, on. we had um, another question then about when you feel anxious do you bite your nails or oh. and um, yes people a lot of people seem to bite their nails wow. and um, the skin and pick a nail polish if it's oh, yeah. you know if you have nail yeah. polish on um, or play with their phone because that's like another gadget that like the pop it socket I mean just like da-da-da-da, or just yep. touch yeah, well, it's remember like a the weird fidget addiction. spinner things that they were creating. Oh, yes. That was a thing. What yeah. happened to that? That was like a good two years, and they were like, "Bye." Like, it just <laughs> They're off the market. I don't know. I mean, like, here's the thing. I mean, I, in the moment, I can see it, but, like, I'm not carrying that with me. Anymore. Right. No. It's like, my fingers are attached, so they're coming. I have a little loophole on my belt, <laughs> bucket hole. Exactly. For my fidget. I think I saw some people have it on their keychains. and That's just, smart, yeah. Okay, but can I just say this? Nothing against it, but, like, when I came here, I didn't know what these things were. So I came here two years ago, and then I started seeing them. Like, little ninja stars, like, frisbees. It's, yeah. They supply yeah. these gadgets now? I yeah. wonder what other gadgets they're going to come up with. You know, it's funny, actually reading too I see uh, pulling out eyebrow hairs and yes. eyelashes too is a thing I yes. was shocked by that when you and said the nail I pressed. just thought about that because I had actually some friends growing up that in middle school I you know no one was talking about the you know do you have anxiety we're all we're just sitting in class and it's just like just do your best do your homework get good grades and just on to the next on to the next high school call it da 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 and I would see actually kids looking around I would see them like pulling their eyebrow or eyelashes Mm -hmm. and I never made that connection until I was older but I'm like that's the thing people either bite pick or pluck or pop their pimples or pull pull their hair out like it's very it's really sad it's something like and I think yeah and and again it's like only through stories like yours and creating that dialogue and putting it out there that parents also can be aware because I I I question whether in their generation they went through that. Oh, um, of course. But, but the, no, think, no one ever talked about exactly. it, I guess. Yeah. And it was a different age, too. So I think the boxes that were created back mm-hmm. then were a little more general. Yes. They seem tighter. Tighter, yes. but but I think kind of general. Like, now I feel like we've taken, like, okay, you're going to be a woman. Are you going to be a businesswoman? Are you going to be this? Are you going to mm-hmm. be this? Are you going to be this? Are you going to be that? What are, what kind of a woman are you going to be? Are you going to be a type A person? Like, oh, right, yeah. It's like all these things. There's it's like, more. well, wait a minute. And Instagram would be, and, like, that's why I always go back to, <laughs> pa- to Bailey. Yeah, I know Bailey more now. That was a clear, great start Clear, <laughs> clear, clear. I have clear a race. If it makes me feel weird or uncomfortable, <laughs> bye. Unfollow me. That's fine. Bye. Don't even need that stuff. Don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the last question Our was final one was of uh, how do you resolve anxiety and so uh, you know most people d- either let it pass so just just let yeah, the time yeah. take its course uh, breathe talk it out meditate yoga sleep or um, I think somebody was mocking me here have a British breakfast <laughs> what is a British breakfast it's, Consistent. <laughs> it's sausages it's baked beans it's fried eggs it's pretty good actually that bacon, would bring my anxiety bacon, down hash uh, yeah, that yeah, yeah it's nice it's good and cooking it honestly cooking is another way is too because yes. it's yes. putting your focus into something else which takes us to our last segment of 
Tangible tools. tools. Yeah. What kind of tangible tools can you recommend to our teddies and listeners oh, out there? So much. I feel like I have a scroll. I could be like, ding, 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 and get a roll across the hallway. Um, Just one talking to someone, whether that's a therapist or someone you trust, a teacher, a guidance counselor, a friend, a cousin. I just think it's anyone who makes you feel good and makes you feel like just safe and comfortable too is just exercise, dance, movement, running around your apartment, house, um, playing with your dog in the backyard, going swimming. Yeah. And you know, you don't have to have a gym membership. You can go to your neighbor's pool. You can go run on the sidewalks. You can just go in the Santa Monica Malibu mountains. And like, there's literally, oh, again, so apps, it's apps, oh, apps yeah. that teach you Workout exercises yes. with nothing. You yes. don't need anything. No. Or go to Yasmin's yoga class. Oh, yes. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for that. Promo. <laughs> but talking about abs as well, yesterday um, I was speaking to doc, um, Dr. Dalton Combs. He's one of those who, uh, it's, it's fascinating. They have this AI program mm -hmm. that basically um, teaches humans better behavior. So it's wow. to break the pattern of habits. Um, and so they kind of pinpoint sort of your behavior, your habits and everything that. to make you a better human. And yeah. so there's this app that they've created called um, Space. And there's another mm. one called the Crystal Mirror AI, where you look into a crystal mirror and it oh. tells you your mood. And Space Wait, is... On the phone? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And Space is this app where um, you have an addiction to certain apps, like let's say Instagram or something, and it just pinpoints it and, and teaches you how to manage that and to just uh, kind of like step away from it. <laughs> that is Let so it be healthy for you. <laughs> Stepping away from certain things. Right? <laughs> I had a couple that I, uh, was interesting, but and it's funny because you brought a celery juice. Oh, yes. Thank you. Celery juice. <laughs> How but amazing it, is but she? full circle is because a lot of the things that we're putting in our body, like soda, soda was one of the top things in yeah. the list that it said eliminate before you eliminate yes. sh anything from food wise, wow. eliminate soda first. Really? If you're going to drink soda, they said just get rid of it and drink green tea. It has caffeine in it, but, but it's a better substitute. Yes. Or yeah. just drink water. It has antioxidants. Well. Yeah. And yes. so I've been carrying my jug of water. So I'm like training that. myself. Because yeah. Coca-Cola is, I have an obsession. I love it. It's right. the one thing other than water I really drink. Right. So that was one of them. And then the other thing I've tried doing is decluttering. I don't know yes. if you guys watch, uh, so what's helpful. her name? Marie Kondo on Netflix. Oh. <laughs> Why are people so oh, obsessed with this? Because she's just like the queen of like <laughs> declutter your stuff. You'll declutter your life. Like just the org. Oh, all my drawers are literally square. Yep. Like she said wow. this one thing it and better, you know, it, it just really stuck with me. And I was yes. just like, that makes so much. Everything in your house has to have a purpose. If it doesn't have a purpose, get rid of it. So true. And like, honestly, when yeah. I tell you. My apartment now is nothing like my old apartment. And I walk in every day happy, yes. free. Mm -hmm. Like, it just feels, feel fresh, the energy feels, feels, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I think hoarders should take note of that. You know, and... <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Sorry, I grew up in a old house on there. And it's like, horrible. you know, things like stuff, whether it's clothing or furniture, it can have like emotional attachments yeah. to it. Like, oh, whether, yes. you know, that's your ex boyfriend's um, couch or your a sweater that just reminds you of a bad memory or just things that you've had for five years mm -hmm. and they just have so much. Like, I sage in Palo Santo, my yep. apartment, oh, and I have I the same. That. I do yeah. salt and I have black. Ob I get real. Um, the other day, I thought there was actually a spirit in my apartment, so I've I went. I've had one before. <laughs> Another story for another day. I know. Series. But I'm just, I'm, I agree. You know, things can have like emotional energy. So I'm all about, you know, every like five months or less, just reevaluate oh, yeah. your thoughts, your current like objects, material items, and just toss and donate. Yeah, don't, honestly, donate. it's so funny. My friend, so I have this thing every time I move, I want all new things, just new energy, new things. I keep my little trinkets like that means yeah. something. But, my homegirl was like, what are you going to do with that? I was like, oh, I'm going to bring it to Wasteland and I'm going to try and sell it or yeah. something like that. She was like, just for what? You're going to get like $2 for that. She was like, go bring that to Salvation Army. And 
it's so funny, but sometimes when you just or trade with your friends because there might yeah, be something I have that, that you yeah. might need or want, yeah. And the things that come back to you tenfold, it's like a blessing. But the other yes. thing we talked about <laughs> self care, yes. And on the list, it said, you know, some things that like I love when I get a haircut, I feel uh, bomb. When I get a new yeah. shirt, I feel great. Or girls, <laughs> like walking the street, get, like <laughs> yeah. Hey. When you guys get your nails done, you feel oh, bomb. Yes. Yes. So yeah. sometimes though, we put pressure on ourselves because we can't afford to get our hair done, yes. our nails done. And they had this really cool, and it's so obvious, but it's like, you don't think of that. Mm. Go to a haircut school. Go to a nail school where they'll do your nails for free. Or a massage yes. school. Oh. Give you a massage for free. A facial school where they'll yes. do all the facial yeah. stuff for you. Because they're looking for people to practice, to practice on. on. Yeah. yeah. That's a very good oh, that's point. That's a very yeah. good idea. That was on one of the lists, and I was just like, that's a really cool. I'm going to that massage school. Sure the heck Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. Oh. I want to know if some of your um, upcoming projects are things that you're delving into as well. And yes. W- and what else you're going to be teaching to all young adults alike? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, right now, you know, the school year is almost over. So it's definitely a time oh, of just like <laughs> emails, phone calls, reevaluation, and just getting all my content together. And then during the summer, I do, you know, speak at summer camps and anything like teen adventure, like the trip that I went on in yeah. Rustic Pathways. Um, Any time where I can just come in and be like, just do my thing. Um, I love it. And I'm also, you know, just doing so much like just upgrading my website and all the social media. Um, I am working on my fourth book. And that's about um, I had a health scare. I did community college for one year after high school. And because my I did not get good grades. And I was just very unhappy like mentally. And then two months later, I had a physical health scare. And that was a whole journey. But that really is what inspired me to be like, live my life to the fullest every single day. And I just had more like edge and drive. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to do what makes me happy now. So then I started the whole business. So that moment was like, I feel like the universe was like, Megan, drop out of college. We know you're not happy, like yeah. tapping. And then they're like, okay, she's not listening. <laughs> like Slap on the face. And then that health scare though, it changed my life. So I'm writing a book about that and just... Anything I can do. I mean, I still, like, it was not that long ago that I was speaking at YMCA's and Boys and Girls Clubs for free. And I was going to Toastmasters public speaking meetings and making a YouTube channel and, like, just driving around to, like, 20 schools every day and being like, hi, my name is Megan. And, like, trying, 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 trying. And so I I was like, I never dreamed I would even get to, like, this point. So I'm like, is there anything past this? (laughs) Like, I'll be on. You are only 23. Look at you. Like, you have so much ahead of you. (laughs) No, I'm just, I'm still, like, I'm, like, pinch me. I'm, like, getting paid to speak, and I'm traveling, and it's, like... It's amazing. Turned your pain into your purpose. Exactly. (laughs) Be the hero of your own story. That was one of my favorite quotes that you said in your TED Talk as well. And it and it, sorry. I mean, it just reminds me very quickly of what Taman Jadad, she's an author as well of Everything You Need to Know About Love, almost. Um, and she said... <laughs> <laughs> That's a great... <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. But it has like 5,000 years worth of ideas from prominent mm-hmm. thinkers. And um, she says, you know, pick yourself, pick your genre, pick your character, pick your narrative. Ooh. And what is it that you want to become within mm. your story? Because we're all stories. We all have different stories right. and narratives. Of and course. it's a matter of you choosing and knowing and then really going for it. So that's yeah. why I love that quote. Be the hero of your own story. Come on. We need yeah. to ch- get the children's book out of you. <laughs> so I'll Megan, wait for that bit. <laughs> where can everyone keep in contact and follow everything that you're doing? Yeah. So, I mean, I have Instagram, MeganWGallagher.com. And then that's also my website name. I have YouTube, um, Facebook, everything, LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> I'm everywhere, and I just um, I live in Los Angeles too. So Yay. my TEDx talk is on the TEDx YouTube page, and yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well, we can't see. T- uh, we can't wait to see how your journey un- uh, unfolds. Yeah, that's gonna unfold. <laughs> <laughs> like what? All this Instagram talk. I know. It's- <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. You guys been working so, in Wingstop. Um, okay, sorry. I was like, what did I You're say? Like, she's just excited. <laughs> yeah. Ready to try these tips out. <laughs> Um, you can find me at Yasmin Tanres. And where can we find you, Jesse? Boom. Everywhere at DJ Jesse J. And you guys can find us again. Make sure you guys follow us at Talking TED Talks. The link in the bio will take you to all of the past conversations yes. we've been having. Because these are conversations worth, worth exploring. Till next week. <laughs> Peace. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 